Greetings to everybody, anybody that is tuning in to the Native Wellness Power Hour today. Um, I actually got on early, you know, I'm early Indian today, at least. And um, so I will wait till one o'clock, but greetings today. And I, I was, this morning I looked at the calendar and I was like, the last Monday of 2020. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I almost made it. Okay, two more minutes, folks. And um, I guess it's this one. Good afternoon. I see people checking in. Awesome. We will actually wait until the one o'clock. Or it's one o'clock my time, it's noon somewhere, it's two o'clock, it's three o'clock. <laughs> you know, so. And today, uh, where I am, it's a, it's a little crisp. So if you hear a loud humming in the background, it's because I had to turn my stove up, the fan on it pretty high to uh, get the chill out of the room. And I'm just gonna briefly put my phone so we don't get to interrupt it. All right, put it on the magic, the magic button. So I guess right now, uh, I just, the temperature comes up on my phone. It's one o'clock. Good afternoon. Good time right now. Um, welcome to the Native Wellness Power Hour today. Um, my name is Lori Newbrest. Um, uh, my traditional name or my real name. My real name is human, but the other one I go by that my grandparents gave to me when I was seven days old, prior to any other type of somebody renaming me, um, is Aste Nikiwa. And so I am one of the family members there are now i believe uh, two generations of us um, carrying that name forward so uh, welcome today to um uh, in i was early so i said this i said this is the last calendar or one marker of time that we live under because right as a as a native person we live under all these kind of ebb and flow and the quantum leaps and the string theories and the ancestors teachings and our sense of Indian time and the earth time. But in one calendar, today's the last Monday of 2020. Yay, we almost made it. We're almost there. We're almost, you know, we just got to keep going forward. So today I, uh, I want to share with you about wellness and moving forward in a good way. And I think that our, really, I, I had just this uh, kind of dynamic morning, like I am, um, I am working out a pattern. So I make, like if I get a pattern, it, it doesn't matter even if I buy like a, a, a clothes pattern or any type of pattern, you know, or instructions to make something. You know, I haven't made like a rocket ship or anything, but if I had a good picture and some instructions, you know, maybe. Um, but I was working on a pattern this morning and particularly about this part of not all tribes or not all indigenous people, but this part of the face for my people. Because normally like during this time, I, um, I was looking for these, uh, they're also hazard glasses or safety glasses, but these type of glasses that we use that it helps you see better in the snow, like a blizzard, which we had last week, but it, it helps differentiate layers of the snow. So your eye, your human eye, when it's getting inundated by white light, daytime or nighttime, these, these glasses help differentiate. So, they normally only make them men's size, or that's what the outer world says. But in all of that, I this part of my face, my ancestors' genetics in this face, 
um, I have to look usually in what is commonly sold as men's apparel. So with me remaking a pattern, I have to tailor it to sort of my life, my reality, my, my genetics. And um, but first I want to tell you a funny story. Everybody knows like when those blingy sunglasses hit Indian country or indigenous people's country, like, you know, these big, if that's all you could afford of the Kardashians wardrobe was those big blinging sunglasses, people were rocking those everywhere, right? So we're coming up on uh, January 23rd for our people is a marker of a really hard time that happened to a band of our, our people and uh, during the winter time. And so one time we were down there as, as the living generation commemorating that elevating that story not not it was for others but it was for us is for our people to acknowledge what was done to our families and so that we could move forward and so it, it was really cold because it's out farther on the prairie and it's on the riverbed and you know People came, the logistics, it doesn't matter, the cold weather, you know, people went down early, built fires. Like it's a, it was a very beautiful commemoration of our people when we had a great loss in, in the living generation for decades. Um, some of our elders, now elders, but when they were elders in training, <laughs> they initiated this to bring to bring light to the history of what is happening for our people. Our winter count, if you want to say, of our generation, our calendar. This is so we're all down there on the riverbed, you know, fires blazing, everyone had their heavy coats on and pulling out coats. Some people just, you know, were able to sit in their trucks or pickups and, you know, stay warm. But those blingy sunglasses, people had them on, right? And I had a not a really blingy pair, and they weren't designer. Hey, you know, because ended on a budget. And, but they, you know, so a lot of the ladies had on those blingy sunglasses. And, but it was about on the riverbed, it was like, it was well below zero, maybe like 10 below or more with the wind. And what we found out is those blingy sunglasses made for some, you know, smaller bone person from Southern California rested it on our Indian rested it <laughs> rested on our Indian cheekbone. And if you ever try to wear plastic sunglasses in below zero temperatures, that's a no no because they'll start burning your face. <gasps> you can get burnt in the cold. Yeah. Right, you know, that's an Indian reality. But so everyone had to take off their sunglasses and you know put them somewhere but i often think of that in terms of the time we're living in how the living generation we like things you know and uh, there's nature's bling also you know there's in this today in this cold weather this morning when i got up when the dawn light was coming up and i went out let my dogs out and i let you know, I was looking outside, I could see the frost twinkling. So that's like the creator's bling, if you want to say. But this morning when I was working on that pattern about this segment of our face, the sizes, and all the mass making that's going on and that we've, you know, we come from a lot of cultures had traditions of mass making and they have teachings about mask and, and when you when you wear those to get through a changing moment. And so this is our living generation changing moment to wear these masks. And there's a lot of public health information out there about you know the why we do that. And so some days, just like other days, when I um, offer up my prayers or I start the day and I look for my intention of the day, or if I have to go for some reason 
into a larger population center and go shopping for essential items to live. Because uh, um, I'm one of, uh, I see people that can order even their food gets, their meals are already prepped for them and they kind of just put them together. You know, they think that's, that is cooking, but they put them together, but it gets delivered to their door. Well, I don't have that luxury. You know, like if I ordered, you know, some one of those eating programs where they bring meals, that meal wouldn't be in good condition by the time I found my house. So, so I'm, I'm not under that right now, that luxury in the pandemic. But I was looking and thinking about how in this time, there's so much like opportunity for, to find those intentions each day but also that little crux or little sprinkle, kind of like the creators glitter this morning, you know, in the frosted dawn light, to find that sprinkle in the day to tailor it to you so that your wellness, your family's wellness, your community's wellness, if you are by yourself during the pandemic, that your, your, you're not alone, you're just in a different situation. And to sprinkle that little creator's bling in your life. And for me this morning, it was figuring out, taking that mass developed pattern, it's free streaming, it's non-copyrighted, all that stuff. On the, from the internet and tailoring it to the genetics of my ancestor face. And so I made one and it kind of reminded me of, which is also, it was unintentional, but it's my experiment. So I made one and it kind of looked, it was starting to look like the front of a horse. You know? And I was thinking, okay, I don't got time for that, but I need to make like a cloth horse mask, you know, like, like, that is appropriate for the time we're living in. And what I found, and uh, you know, like when I first started understanding the magnitude um, as I grew up about what had all happened, and it was like the grace of not knowing. And you know, the non Indians have that thing um, that saying, ignorance is bliss. Well, it isn't that saying came from privileged people and so to understand that wellness it's a process and it's a journey and during this time um, i mean today but also you know the marker that we are living through right now this experience of covid19 the pandemic it has sprinkled over everything we've done. And some of the teachings that I've had from my own mother, my own parents, my grandparents, from my family members, that to me, those are the great people of history. Those are the change makers because they were the spiritual ground troops that when our life was upheavaled, when the upheaval came to us, those were the historical figures that made sure I had life today. And I think about that sometimes. And when I was little, I often even when I was very, very, very far away from my grandparents. I used to pray to my grandmother, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes more, from the time I was a little girl. And now I'm, I'm still my mom's little girl, but I am not a girl. But somewhere in me is that little girl, that inner, inner little girl, inner little child, inner little non-binary person. Because I also, when I was little, you know, like I had these dreams about, I thought, you know, in school they say, 
right now all the cyber kids that are getting schooled over the, the web in whatever way they're they're still learning in a school matrix. So when they'd have career day and somebody would want to be a police officer, somebody would want to be a teacher or a nurse or I thought I wanted to be a dolphin. I come from the center of the landmass. <laughs> I come from, you know, a very different, we don't have dolphins in our culture. But when I was a little girl, my, my creative, my creator's bling that used to operate in, on, on my spirit and help me through childhood, because I thought I could become a dolphin. And my teacher, you know, I don't know what was in my school file because that's back when people used to write things. You know, I don't know. It's probably dust somewhere. Probably was recycled. And, um, but as I got older, I, I think back to that, that, that that was my truth as, as a little person, as a, you know, a young human. And the more years that pass from the time I thought that, it makes more sense because in the culture I come from, it's possible to be the magnificent. And to me, when I was that little human, the magnificent was a dolphin. And what I was learning about them and, you know, just uh, stories, an Alaskan native story that I heard about a dolphin and just that was the most miraculous creature I heard about at that so that's what was going to be my career choice and still to this day dolphins do not have like a 401k plan or they're not eligible for social security so you know maybe the things I've done with my life have led me down a path I was supposed to take but I was thinking about that that how we adapt, information comes into us. And even now in our communities, we're adapting. Um, and we're in a moment in Indian country where we now see last week was filled with so many pictures of frontline workers, indigenous people that are frontline workers, doctors, nurses, public health officials, mental health officials, um, ceremonial leaders. Some other nations have made the decision that the language keepers also get the first round of vaccine. You know, that. so there were all these images of our first, our first tears, our first people that entered into those, into those fields. So even in a time of great, you know, this is like, you know, we got some stamina. Um, that's why every person has stamina because we are here right now. And this has been a journey. And so if you want to say we are on, you know, so I heard a lot of analogies for my people. We went into lockdown in March, our first day at home. But people were calling it lockdown because that was only our, our kind of like reference. But now, so after nine months, people were talking about, well, this is a gestation, you know, of a baby. And I don't know what the men thought or the men or the people with that, uh, you know, that reproductive or that equipment. I don't know what they thought, you know, <laughs> they're like, well, I don't know. I never had a baby, <laughs> you know, kind of. but, but they've contributed to babies. So now we are kind of like, in that part because all these babies that have been born we are going to carry them into the future and the gifts that we were born from born with and the gifts that we've in skills we've developed over however many years you've lived if you're 15 over your 15 years of life uh, one of my grandsons, Koholo, today's his 18th birthday. So whatever gifts he was born with, that he's carried to this moment. We are now in charge 
of getting all these real COVID babies that have been born during this time to the future. And so that if another great upheaval comes or if they have their first birthday party, their first, you know, ceremony, their first berry, fresh berry, they pick their first berry in this coming summer or wherever you live in the world, their first fish, you know, whatever that first is, if they have it during this time, they're relying on us and it is our gift it is our gift to be responsible for those young people born now. And so that we begin more and more to be conscious of that young person we were. That moving forward also means whatever age you are, if you're in a different group in this, you know, place in the, the circle of life or the group of life, there is a time, there's going to be a time, and it's now. There's going to be a different course in your life. And I think that people have report prioritized or they've re-ranked. It's kind of like if you get a dollar fifty and you go into the dollar store. You go in there with a the plan, you look at what you have, but before you enter that door you're already thinking about a possibility and we're in that moment now you know we've been in it throughout this whole pandemic but when you're constantly having things rushing and attention oh excuse me right on cue that's my 67 pound dog so i have to actually let her in she just opened the door i'll be right back Thank you very much for your patience and tolerance because <laughs> she is a member of my family. Um, my three main primary COVID companions are all her babies. And she's um, actually helps, she doesn't knock anything over. If anything falls apart, it's probably her showing her presence. Um, but really, uh, as oh, you've just seen her tail go through the, the backdrop. Um, as we are moving into this next phase or tomorrow, as we're marking the, the times we've come through, for my people, this isn't true for everybody in the United States or in um, whatever continent. Um, you know, if you're calling from or tuning in from New Zealand or if you're on YouTube, you know, later on today. But we are really moving through a time where people are starting to prepare. They're starting to prepare for the next season. So we've lived through the earth seasons and now for my people, we're in winter and we still must prepare to live in the climate that we do and be mindful of the changes. And I was of the earth changes and the atmosphere and you know, the air the birds, the animals. But I was um, driving the other day along the river and in my lifetime that river is normally frozen. So it wasn't frozen. The river I live by has ice on the edges but it's not frozen. And I have memories of um, one past uh, time of this similar to this time of year um, of being of walking in the middle of that river and it was totally frozen so frozen you could walk on it you could carry things across it and but as changes come to all our environments people are preparing and no matter where we have been now, 
you know, I think we went through one, um, you know, and it's real life. It's also too, like the, the joy and the wonderment that like, you know, high school football or high school basketball brings to native communities and the chance for people to gather and um, support our youth, to participate in our communities, to go in mass and create safe circles in cities where we don't live or in venues where we don't live, to go to conferences. That season, we've lived through one now. We've lived through all those changes. So as we prepare in our, on our communities to move forward, we're going to take that wisdom, but we are not going to forget or not acknowledge all the other things that, that we need to pay attention to. And so I think, or I've noticed some um, things I've heard and seeing some posts on social media or, you know, because this is really now really inundated our whole life. Um, you can't get away from it as if you could before, right? But it also can be worked for the good. And it's okay to be happy. It's okay to celebrate during this time. And it's okay during those times of celebration or great happiness or prosperity or, you know, a lucky day. Anything that was feasted and maybe in your community or the moments that people created for happiness. We are remembering the people we lost during this time also. We are remembering those people that are struggling right now. Because we are showing faith we are demonstrating our commitment to live and the life force when it is pulled forward when it is pushed forward collectively that's we're not leaving people behind or pushing them to the side that life force surrounds them so that they know they can feel that energy that people are moving forward we're looking to the future we will get beyond this. And, you know, I know a lot of 12 steppers, uh, you know, those people go to self-help group and they have 12 steps and bingo, things are cool. Um, and they have this saying, and so I was thinking about this because I've heard it. Then they said, it's helping them, you know, this too shall pass. And I was thinking about this. And that's me thinking about it. And I thought, yeah, I think I think my grandparents would have instantly said that that that's also how you encourage yourself, how we have looked at, and why we are still here today. They knew it wouldn't always be hard, even though when the hard times didn't seem like they would end. And during the pandemic, there's been a lot of hardship. There is the creature comfort hardship of people. There is, you know, we, we negotiate with this, right? You know, there is uh, people finding inventive ways to keep on living, to keep their families in a house, to keep their social connections together. And it's changing. And so I've, I've thought a lot about when people, I've listened to what they said. And then there's this technique we use uh, in um, Native Wellness uses it and so on. But it's, but it's, it was, it's used all across Indian country um, that was developed by Harold Belmont. And so I've used it during the pandemic because I'm real world and, and things, you know, get the extra steps to everything, there's extra steps now. And some days it doesn't bother me. I just whiz through it. I have my plan, I have my kit and all that stuff. 
but sometimes uh, you know something gets thrown in there and I hit a little bump in the road. So, or I have uh, maybe an encounter with somebody and it, it just is kind of, I got to get over it. I got to get through it. I got to put it to the side because I got to move forward in a good way. You know, that's my self-coaching. But it's based upon really, you know, three shared abilities um, that however you receive information into the world, not just through your eyesight, because sometimes you see with your spiritual self, right? So you see, however you see, that's one thing you ask yourself, what did I see? Or what is my knowing? And what did it hear? What did you hear? Which means you got to listen, right? What did you hear? And then what did you feel? So sometimes to do my own self check-in and as, you know, just moving through this time of the pandemic, I use those techniques. What did you see? What did you hear? And what did you feel? How did that make you feel? And then I go on with whatever I, is my intention of the day. So during this time, there's a lot of wisdom people, even kids. You know, uh, they've just integrated into their childhood experience. You know, school to them, I mean, you know, uh, school to them is, that's their experience. It will never be mine. That's not my experience of having, you know, gone, gone to school. But they are integrating. And that's one of childhood's great capacities because they are learning, they're experiencing their first living generation experiences. And so to them, they don't have all of this, uh, you know, luggage like we have of this great adult change if you're an adult going through this. But their whole family, if their whole family is going through it, they also need those that same consideration, those same tools of how to talk about this time, in this time. And I'm glad I put, you know, that warranty thing. Those are some of the best auto warranties. It just was trying to bug me during the power hour. Nah, -uh. those people are really well organized. Anyway, so during this time, children can be learned can be taught those very same three questions what did you see what did you hear how did that make you feel or how do you feel because they are also learning those skills of how in their young life to negotiate and go forward and they have the capacity to also process through these times so that it is not the legacy that for generations like that, like my experience of being part of the generation standing on that riverbank, remembering that dreadful, dreadful massacre. And then over decades, it changing to times where we gathered to show who we were and are and gathered to exhibit our strength, not our resiliency, our strength. And so for children, they can be taught how to communicate because all indigenous cultures all native first nations you know whatever english you know tag you want to go by uh, has one thing in common we were all storytellers we were an oral culture we were singers 
we were people that made melodies or could listen to being out. You know, I had this uh, this really strong memory of um, one berry picking season, me and one of my friends, we were berry picking. And it was uh, a, pretty, a pretty warm day. And we were, the cottonwoods were along the riverbank, but we were in the berries also along there. And it was a hot day. And the berry leaves started moving. And sometimes that could mean a bear was there. So we always, you know, we always, <laughs> we always get real attentive. But the berry leaves started moving. And in that moment, when I heard that, you know, I, I looked around, uh, you know, nothing was shaking, so I, was, you know, so I kept picking berries. But I started to feel my, my spiritual antennae. I started to see and started to feel uh, the presence of little children. And those berry bushes are near the, one of the boarding schools that were um, established on our reservation, I live on the Blackfeet Reservation. But I don't, that day, what the beauty that I heard and experienced was the gentle movement of the berry leaves. So that soothing tempo is my strongest memory of that day and because um, we weren't picking near each other we were kind of apart and then my friend came over and uh, you know she's like one of those people she was born to another mother and stuff but for we were sisters you know and um <clears throat> so in that moment she kind of came walking through real quiet and then she said, did you hear that? I said, yes. Then she just kind of went back over where she was picking berries and we continued picking berries. And so what, what I remember of that day is the movement of the leaves. That's what I heard. So in this time and the movement of those little people, little human human spirits and in this time I think about that that if I was in another space if I wasn't practicing um, what ancestors had done since we found out the beauty of the berry <laughs> since the first berry that was my focus and so during the pandemic, I've also used that to uh, those types of memories to reground me to those beautiful times where I share people and with people, you know, just like extraordinary experiences, you know, that won't make it on um, the stories that are coming out, like on the news medias or anything about what happened in 2020, you know, but for me, that's the ancestors acknowledging and helping me, gifting me those memories so that when I move forward in my life, despite how hard they are, what times, you know, I'm living in, I always have that creator's bling in my memory. Like I cannot unhear those berry leaves moving when the rest of the day was still. And so during this time, those memories you have, they're appropriate to remember the happiest day that you had. And if you were alive, like in, you know, 1995, you know, and I spent a lot of, um, I can remember this one day when um, all the people in recovery in Oakland, California, they started, my mom was a part of this. They started this uh, around this big 
man-made urban lake. We started this thing to get the message out about the sickness of running and you could live a different way. And they had this annual run that is still going on called Running Is My High. And uh, my older sister and one of her friends, that's, uh, she's from over there, from Yakima, they were out there and they had been at the Prince Conference the night before. So they were all purple. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> and I can remember, this is like in the 1990s, you know, and so, so I can remember it was the first for Indians who were saying, you know, running is my high, you don't have to do that other stuff, you know, and, um, but, you know, if you're born like in 1990s, you pretty much know who Prince, and even now people know who Prince is, but whatever your early happy memories are, this is the time to tell somebody that memory. To share. And even if your family, if you've heard that, mem that memory 27 times, 37, 50, and that person wants to share that memory again with you. If you were collectively, those are our encyclopedias of the ancestor stories being built for those babies those living babies and more are going to come right because we ain't through this yet you know um so share a memory with somebody even yourself give yourself permission to remember that happy memory because uh, I feel those times, like just ta just sharing with you here today about that very picking experience. I can feel that just like I I had a moment where it was it was so people call it, use English grounding, but I was so in that moment that nothing else mattered. And those are also, you know, in the outer world, there's techniques that like you can get meditation apps, you can get, you know, all this uh, technology driven stuff. But your own database is to own the happy memories also, even in times of hardship because that's what a collective experience is. And it, it shows, it helps you be a whole person. And in wellness, there's a lot of philosophies of people healing, or the English word healing. And if you know, if that word doesn't work for you, you know, just kind of suck a chalkboard, you put it over there and you translate. Because as, a, as the person I am from the people I'm from and my experience, I often have to translate English into English and then English into English. So if wellness or healing is not your preferred English words, you know, try on other active words, being, being who you are, your true self, you know. I'm waiting for the dating app where instead of trying to, you know, go out and hunt other people on an app, where you are trying to be your own soulmate. Because then you'd be ready for whatever else came along. You know who you are. Right? Hey, maybe somebody out there right now is going to have a genius idea. How to be your own soulmate. Swipe right. Swipe left. <laughs> so that's a joke. Ha ha ha. But, but I do think that in this time, there those happy memories, even as we let go and have new, create new memories, and really the last couple of weeks, but all through the pandemic, people have shared their happiness, but they've also shared the hardships. And I think there was, um, 
sort of like a pebble in a lake moment last week when Indian country started to get access to the vaccination. Regardless of, of where you stand on it today, you know, that it's not going to be instant. It's not like a drive through Mickey D's where you know, just go in there and put out your arms. <laughs> You know, <laughs> sorry, no fast food chain has stepped up to give COVID-19 vaccinations. <laughs> and so it, it's going to be another leg of the journey for Indian country. But to know that in my community that our frontline workers my younger relatives, my older relatives, that uh, sta our staff at our hospital are getting it, that our elders in the supportive um, care home are getting it, that there may be through our partnerships that people in my community are getting the vaccinations. That makes me have a feeling of, of great gratitude. And I also have those memories of when my community did not have access until long after of vaccinations or treatments. And it, it gives me encouragement to see the capacity that we've built during this time and the networking. You know, because uh, um, I have stories about when I had to get vaccinated with, with my, one of my, young, well, my, my brother. And, you know, it took like three nurses to get him a vaccination. <laughs> you know? And now you see, you know, days are changing. You see the Indians all smiling, you know, <laughs> getting vaccinated. You see elders, you know, groups of elders that have went on social media and they're like, you know, so I can see my family, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> you know, that's going to be like the new, the new cred that you got vaccinated. <laughs> so, but it, it, it is, it's a glimmer. It's part of that, um, you know, the creator's bling that has come into our communities. And as we move through the pandemic and live on in this living generation, there are innumerable tasks that we have. You know, our menu, we're like the, that one chain restaurant, you know, that pretty much if you've been to a conference and there's this certain type of spaghetti place uh, you know their menus like this well indians indian countries menus like this so there's some a great menu of tasks and in the living generation somebody has been born with those gifts that match those tasks those tasks good shiny fun hardworking. So each of us has that internal gifting that the creator said, when this life comes on into earth, into the living generation, these are the gifts you're going to carry forward. So that's everybody. That's every single person has those gifts to move forward in a good way. And during the pandemic, you know, if, if, if I want to say uh, there's all these um, philosophies, again, that come into Indian country about letting go. And yes, you do have to let go because otherwise you need like one of those giant suitcases you buy in Tijuana. You used to be able to buy, well, you still can buy in Tijuana. You know, you can hide a body in there or something. But if you don't let go, the more you carry forward. And so I wanted to share also some techniques about that, you know, there's apps for everything now, but not, not everybody feels appish. <laughs> um, but 
writing things, creating things, putting that energy of whatever you feel is right now something that maybe is in, impeding or it might be a barrier in your wellness. You know, creating yourself out of it and whatever that means. It may mean, you know, that uh, you, you try something new, you take a healthy risk, because you got to get creative. Your spirit has to let in that creator's bling. You have to reflect the bling you carry to the outer bling of creation. And that's really the, the process of being creative. Doesn't mean that you have to, you know, start selling whatever you make the minute it's finished. Or that you may have a journal or a sketchbook, or you may even use a stick to create a picture in the dirt or in the snow. When I used to be snowed in, when I lived on a different part of the reservation, sometimes it was for eight days. I mean, yeah, you can't go nowhere. I used to go out and I used to ride in the snow. And sure enough, a big old wind would come and just nicely erase it so it would be fresh for me the next day. <laughs> and I used to fill, um, and I always cleaned up the balloons. I used to fill balloons with colored water and let them freeze. And then you have like these giant little frozen globes everywhere. I seen it on the internet. And so I, you know, I did that too. I bought solar lights and I created uh, patterns. Instead of a bouquet of flowers, because, you know, those are very pricey where I live, fresh flowers. I have a bowl of solar lights in a, in a, a vase or a vase on my windowsill. So during the day, they get light. And during the night, they let off a little glow for about six hours. And... So whatever way you can express yourself creatively, that moves your story forward. And I've also, you know, I'm, I'm a practitioner of uh, being responsible when I'm angry or being responsible when I have a memory of where I was injured younger, um, earlier in my life, and that anger made it into my present life. So sometimes I learned this technique from uh, another person is I would write whatever I was trying to get over on the bottom of my shoe and chalk. <laughs> or sometimes I would just write it in the air <laughs> and then it, it vanishes. But it's the same technique that if there's something impeding you, impeding you right now, or you know, you, it's heavy, it's in your gut, you can move it forward through creativity. And whatever that means to you, maybe even just thinking creatively, writing a story in your head, remembering a happy memory and telling someone, those are all healing or being in the moment acts. Anytime you're being in the moment and staying in the moment and regrounding in the moment you're in, if you wiggle your toes right now and your shoes or your slippers or your socks, or maybe your bare feet, you're lucky your floor is warm so you're barefooted. You know, if you wiggle your toes right now, that is helping you stay grounded in being in the moment. And really that I, that is what healing is, is staying in touch with yourself from your little human all through the journey of your life to however you, however old you are today and whatever your experience is. And then I did want to talk today about something that, um, because uh, Friday is on the calendar that we live under January 1, 2021. So I would love it if people got their 2021 dance on. Or if you are planning on dancing in the new year at a new gathering, because right, we might have to make up some new gatherings because 
the gatherings that we used to go to, like in the 1930s or however long they've been going on, that was when they first let us out to be ourselves in public. That's when you wouldn't be arrested for wearing your regalia or singing your songs, right? So if you're the generation born after that, and now those gatherings have a legacy in a history, but we've seen a uh, masterful, magnificent invention, the social distance powering. But I also want to encourage you, young people, because my grandparents did this when they were young people. They, and many other families on the side of the, this side of the reservation, and then we have a whole other community on the north side, that during extremely hard times in last century, they started societies and they took that strength of the ancestors, those traditions, and they made new celebrations where we were allowed legally prior to 1978, where we were allowed between that time period to start showing ourselves again publicly. They made, with all that knowledge, new gatherings. So if you are out there, it's okay to have a new gathering. It's okay to start planning for something that acknowledges this time and bring forward those things we love. People gathering, the songs, dancing, healthy, correctly prepared food. You know, one thing that's going to come out of the pandemic, I'm just going to say, our expectations of like, if we want to use the English word powwow food, the sanitation and meal prep, it is up here now because everybody has educated themselves to a degree and and has the pleasure of more of home cooking than they've had in a while in a lot of communities you know busting out the old skills learning, learning new ones so those established in your our lifetime historical gatherings that legacy will be morphed but we have to respect that those gatherings also are gatherings they have a history of encouraging the people to celebrate to come and gather in whatever way you can right now it's electronic so give yourself that permission whatever community you belong to that if you have to have a day and many tribes have already started talking about this and doing this how are we going to honor those people that we have walked on to the spirit world during this time? No, those gatherings will be ones that are necessary. And how are we going to be happy again? How are we going to show our strength? Not our resiliency, because that's a whole other thing. We're strong people. And in those moments when we have challenges, it's that strength that gets us through there. And strong people know how to celebrate. But I also wanted to, in these closing moments, to leave you with some encouragement that in the outside world, there is a pressure, you know, I don't know what happens, like it's supposed to be, uh, you know, people start making uh, resolutions and I'm sure, you know, they will do that again. But there should be also a resolution about how you are going to speak about yourself. How are you going to treat yourself? How are you going to nurture yourself in the coming year? And, you know, no Indian likes deprivation. You know, that's why that scene about, you know, in that one movie where they have 50 fry bread and 100 folks and they their solution, they tear that fry bread in half. 
So maybe you need to do that. Maybe next year you just, every fry bread you get, you tear in half and you give it to somebody else, you know. But don't be making no fry bread this big, so, you know, kidding. But during the next bit that we're going to go through, through the winter time into the spring and then the summer and then another fall or, you know, whatever the creator and the earth's plan is for us, that in there there's also a plan for how you are going to nurture yourself. How you're going to talk, your self-talk. And so really that is my um, my intention on being here today. That thank you very much for joining the Native Wellness Power Hour. And all this week there'll be, there's a schedule coming out today. So just check the website and then um, a lot of people know you can watch it later on YouTube or here. Uh, they got an Instagram account, you know, like, you know, the usual social media tribe. And, um, but thank you for joining us today. And uh, I just look forward to those new celebratory times that we're going to have, those those new days. And, and for people's really flash masks that they're all going to redesign for the Indian face. So give yourself a little pat on your ancestors' cheeks right now and have a beautiful day. And thank you so much for being here with me right now. Love you. Bye.